Hello, little dreamers. I'm setting up the camera. It's Miss A from the Shailen North Hills Library. And I have a book. I don't know if you ever read like the Snowy Day or wait, let me hold on. Hold on. I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay, so do you know this one? The Snowy Day? It's by a guy named Ezra Jack Keats, and it won the Caldecott Medal. Well, he has a ton of other ones, and a lot of them are checked out, so I couldn't bring them in. But he has like a whole cast of characters in his neighborhood. And this book, this is the one we're gonna read tonight, which I just, oh, I didn't even sit on, here it is. It is called Roberto Walks Home, and it's based on the characters that were created by Ezra Jack Keats. And this is actually by Harrington is her last name. Janice N. Harrington. And the pictures are by Jody Wheeler. And what and this is about you, you I think you'll like the story anyway, but especially if you have an older brother or sister, which I do not. My brother's a younger brother. But I bet he would understand the feelings of Roberto in this book. I bet he would. Roberto. My brother's name is Roberto. I mean, it's wrong, but yeah. Roberto waited. He watched the other kids going home. He watched the school bus come and go like big yellow caterpillars, but he waited. He waved to Amy and her mother. He waved to Susie and to his teachers. Aren't you walking home with us? Peter asked. No, Roberto said. My brother Miguel is coming. He promised to walk me home today. We're going to play basketball. Roberto waited. He kicked his foot against the sidewalk. He walked up the steps and down the steps. He ran his fingers over the smooth green leather of the jacket that his brother had given him. Roberto waited. Waiting was hot and itchy. Waiting was multiplication tables. Waiting was looking up the street and down the street. Where was Miguel? Waiting is hard. He slung the green leather jacket around his shoulders like a cape and started home alone. He walked past the yellow dog that growled rawr, 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 and threw itself at the fence. He walked past a man pushing a grocery cart heaping with plastic bags and dirty clothes. He walked past the long dark alley soured with grease and garbage. Roberto pushed his nose against the green jacket. It smelled leathery. It smelled cinnamon, like Miguel. He walked past the park where sometimes Miguel played with him. Roberto heard shouting and laughter. He pushed his face against the fence. He saw his brother shooting hoops with the other big boys. Sweat dripped from Miguel's face. He was laughing and hooting. His feet moved double quick, step, spin, step, spin, stood or stop, up in midair like a bird. Miguel sprang up and shot the ball. Wham! It rang hard through the rim. A big boy slapped Miguel's hands. But Miguel did not see Roberto. Roberto dropped the green leather jacket by the fence. He didn't want it. He hurried home and stomped up the stairs and slammed the door hard. Roberto, what's the racket? His abuelo called. Roberto did not answer. He jumped on his brother's bed. Stomp, stomp, stomp. He kicked Miguel's pillow on the floor. He knocked down the tower he built from his blocks. He pushed his chair. Roberto! Sorry, abuelo, sorry, Roberto called, but he wasn't. He drew pictures of Miguel being chased by a yellow dog and basketball monster. The dog wanted to bite him. The monster wanted to eat him. Help! cried Miguel. Help! Habilit! Habilit! I know. Habochelita! Dude, I said it right before. I'm sorry. Help! Habochelita! That's what Miguel called Roberto, Little Bean. And now it was Miguel who was little. Roberto drew him small, small, small. 
Roberto stared out the window. A pigeon sat on the fire escape. It bobbed its head and looked at him. It fluttered its wings to fly away. Roberto lay on his bed. He closed his eyes and wished that he had wings. He fell asleep. And then something tickled Roberto's back. Something pushed against his shoulders. Wings! Roberto spread his wings. He flew out the window and up, up, up into the sky. I think he's dreaming. He flew round and round and up and over and high. He could see a woman walking dogs. He could see the mailman going from door to door. He saw his brother playing basketball far below. Miguel shot the basketball. It flew up, 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 right into Roberto's hands. Roberto laughed. He took the ball and flew away with it. The big boys shouted and waved their arms. They tried to run after him, but he flew too fast and too high. Habichilita, Miguel called. But Roberto flew higher, higher than the hoop, higher than the roofs and the trees, higher than his big brother. He wasn't a little brother anymore. He wasn't Habichilita. He was. Roberto, Habichulita, Miguel said. Wake up. You want to shoot some hoops with me? Roberto opened his eyes. His brother was standing beside his bed. Roberto slid the covers over his head and turned away. Oh, Habichulita, don't be that way, Miguel said. Go away, you're mean. Roberto could feel his brother tugging at the covers. I'm sorry, Roberto. I'm sorry. Habichulita, I forgot this time. But you promised me, Roberto whispered. It was quiet. His brother didn't say anything. Roberto turned to look, but Miguel has gone. Beside the bed, he saw the green leather jacket, and next to it, he saw Miguel's basketball. The basketball was Miguel's favorite thing. It had Miguel's name on it. He never let anyone borrow it. Roberto found Miguel sitting on the stoop. Miguel looked sad. Can we play for a long time? Roberto asked. Till the moon is as big as a basketball, Habichulita, Miguel said. And they did. And what I like about that story, what I hope you like about it, is like, we aren't perfect, right? We mess up, especially us older siblings. And it's okay to be mad. There are a lot of things that make us mad. And Roberto found some, some constructive ways to get out his anger, you know, jumping on his bed and yelling, you know, um, not hurting anybody. And then he had that very empowering dream. And he made up with his brother. And Miguel was really cool to, like, be a good dude and apologize and even let him use his basketball. Now, what, what I was saying is the characters in this book were, like, Peter is the guy in Snowy Day. I'm pretty sure he's in this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's also in Peter's chair. Yeah. And the characters named in here, like Susie and Roberto and Miguel, they're in Ezra Jack Keats's other books. But this one based on the characters of Ezra Jack Keats, but by Patricia Harrington, and Janice Harrington, and pictures by Jody Wheeler, based on the characters of Ezra Jack Keats. My friends, thank you very much for letting me share that story. I have another one by her that I want to do. Um, I'm going to do this one tomorrow, and I was going to do this one tonight. This is the Chicken Chasing Queen of Larimer County, and this one's just by Janice Harrington. Um, and th this one's really good. But then when I saw this, I was thinking about my brother. I miss him. He lives all the way over in Beachview. And I wondered if you might have ever had an experience with that where your brother or your sister or your mom or your dad or your grandma or your pappy or your uncle chicken made you upset or maybe you made them upset and there had to be some apologizing and some forgiving. Forgiving sometimes takes time. My friends... Thank you for being kind and gracious and forgiving of me when I mess up, like when I mess up words and things like that. And I appreciate who you are, and I'm thankful to be your one of your librarians at the Shirley Northwoods Library. My name is Miss Emily, by the way. Could you please 
do me a favor. Kiss your beautiful man. Kiss your loving heart. And look in the mirror and say, hey, good looking. Because you're all good looking. Just say, hey.